Hey, good morning. How are you guys doing? Good morning. Good morning, Brendan. Good morning. Um, are you guys ready to get started? Just one more minute. We're waiting for one more person. He just, um, he'll be right back in. Can I yeah. ask you, can I ask you a question real quick? Um, with the home health aides, are they going to be using the offline app? The offline app. Um, well, you know yeah. what, Brendan? Is that the phone app? Yeah. Um, they don't like it uh, on the phone. So. Your okay, so I just need to show them the the online version. Yeah, what you're showing, yeah. you're showing me and Jeannie, the directors for patient care services, and then Antonio's here, and he's one of the supervisors. Currently, we don't have like a home health aid. We borrow the ones from the hospice. But if you show us, and when we do um, get one a home health aid, then we'll have to show her or him. Yeah, we do have one that's in the hiring process, but so we just need to know what the process is so that we can teach them or her. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, um, I can go over it real quick and uh, um, as well as, you know, the online version of, of the, the app. And all I usually do for the home health aid is just kind of show them what the encounter looks like, how to get there, and then how to enter a service note online. So, um that's pretty much all I usually go over. I'm usually can cover that pretty quickly and then I can go over the offline app, <clears throat> which for the hospice side, I already created a video for them and it's really the exact same thing. Um, okay. But we can talk about that as well. It's it's is pretty that, straightforward. Is that, is that video something you already forwarded to Molly and everybody else? Yeah, I sent it to, I can't remember who all I sent it to, but yeah, Molly, Amber, um and whoever else I don't know, but yeah, that so she at least Molly should have that. Okay. Okay, great. And and uh, Antonio's here, so we're ready. Okay. Um, do you want me to start from scratch as far as talking about how to log in and everything, or do you want me to skip all that and just kind of? Go through yeah. their processes. You can, you can you can skip that, right? It sounds like it can almost skip everything. <laughs> um, honestly, so basically, all I normally show the home health aides is is the encounter, how to get to it. Of course, I'll tell them how to add their service notes from their from their home screen. Um, if they click on the patient's visit, um, they can go to the encounter by clicking on patient encounter which is the fastest way to do it. Um, and then I usually just kind of go through these tabs, tell them, you know, what the profile, to, this is where their basic demographics are and information about this encounter will be here. Um, contact information such as the patient's home address and additional phone numbers can be viewed here as well up, as up here by the, you know, patient phone. If you hover over that, you'll get the additional phone numbers and addresses if they exist. And then the different patient contact information over here on that right side. Um, I usually tell them about the note section because um, this is where, of course, some scheduling notes may be, um, some directions may be. Um, so I usually talk about this coming in here and just viewing these notes and being able to filter to just the specific note types they want um, by clicking on the drop down bo box for this type. So if they're looking for directions, they can just easily filter it down to that. They don't really need to know anything about the referral tab, um, the physicians tab. They just they can look at the, who's uh, what doctors are involved if they needed to. Of course, they won't hardly need to come to the documents tab. Um, but if they needed to view some kind of document, they would be able to click on that and download that. And the clinical tabs. Good to know because, of course, they can identify the clinical team if you guys utilize that or any additional team members involved in that care. And then they don't really need to know the meds tab, but that's, of course, where they're going to be able to view the meds. They don't need to really see much on the orders tab. Um, however, they could look at their what their home health aid care plan is um, set up, but, of course, this drives their service notes more than anything. So this will be directly inside their service notes. So there's really not a need to come here. Um, but if they clicked on that printer next to it, they would see what their task 
should be all in one spot. But again, that's in their service note as well. So not much to tell them. They don't usually have to deal with payers. And there's usually not anything they have to do in the service notes tab, but they could view service notes from here if they needed to. Um, the only other thing I normally tell them is how to, you know, from their home screen, um, when they click on that visit, um, they can add scheduling notes, is what I call them, scheduling notes. It's just an add note. This is not a service note, but they can click on any visit to let them know you know, hey, take out supplies or or uh, they need to be able to read these notes or know how to read them in case you guys leave a note um, for them. So if there is a note on their um, visit, they would see a little icon to the right. They would click on that and view that note and the, the verbiage right there. Um, other than that, if they click on the visits, they do have the option to um, Basically, the only ones they need is to go to the patient encounter. If for some reason they needed to see the patient schedule, they could click on that, and it would take them directly to this patient's schedule so they can view when the next visit is scheduled for um, tentatively if the patient maybe, maybe asks about that. Um, and then as far as adding a service note, all they need to do is click on the visit. Now, this is going to look a little bit different than what they'll see because they won't have permissions for Oasis or anything like that. So they, they're not going to see um, some things. But they'll click on uh, the visit. This pop-up menu will come up. They'll click on Add Page Service Note Assessment. They won't see the Oasis Integrated Assessment. Um, they're just going to see the regular assessment. So they'll just click on that, and then from the service note type, they're going to choose their home health aid visit, and then hit continue. And that will bring um, them into the service note. This is the edit mode of the service note. Um, their notes are, are extremely shorter, so they'll be fast to go through. Um, but typically, when you come into you know, your home to start your visit, and you start, you add your service note, you'll know your time in, so you'll go ahead and enter your time in. You don't know what time you're leaving yet until you're done with the visit, so um, we'll come back to this section when we're done. Um, there is clinical data on this um, bottom of this header and supply section. Um, it's just good pertinent information for them to know, you know, if there's a patient has allergies, any functional limitations, any activities, uh, or what their activities permitted are their mental status, advanced directives, and DNR. So very good information to know. Um, and then every time you hit next, it will save any information. So your time in, it'll save it and send it to us. So we'll have that. And then it'll move you to the next section. The next section is the actual home health, health aid care plan. So whatever the nurse or therapist set up for the patient or you know for the specific patient um, via the care needs, that's what's going to show up inside these notes. Um, that's all they're going to see uh, for those task actions. And um, we call these ta this task action section, but you can see here the intervention is, is the task that they will perform here. They're just going to choose whether they completed it, not applicable, patient caregiver refused. Um, and there's two other ones in here. I'm not sure. I think Christy must have added those. Um, whatever you guys choose for them to do. But typically, it's going to be completed. It wasn't applicable or the patient caregiver refused. So they did this task. Um, so they'll mark them as complete. And any supporting documentation, you know, how they tolerated it, why they refused. Maybe there was some issue with this specific task. So you, uh, the home health, they talked to the RN involved and, and, and let them know. They can write any of that information in here. Um, in the comment sections. They do need to uh, respond to every one of these. Um, so even if they didn't do it, because maybe the patient was short of breath, can tolerate it, um, something like that, then they could, they'd could still have to answer this and then they can put why they did not perform that task and that they notified the RN that they did not perform that task. Can I ask a quick question? Um, yeah. Okay, when you mark completed, does that uh, complete it only for that day, or does it completely for um, take it away with that the 
It's just for that. No, 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 no. Yeah. No, and it won't do that with any discipline, um, by the way. If you mark it as completed, you're just saying that you, you perform this task for this visit. Um, and it will always carry over to every note. Or this part won't carry over, but every service note will still have your home health aid care plan in it and all the different tasks. So the only time those will get removed out is if you guys change their plan of care. And the way to do that is we can go through that too today. But they would, um, on the orders tab, um, they would end up uh, doing an aid care plan and um, end dating the ones that no longer apply and then adding the new ones. Um, so we can go over that in here in a minute. Um, and then, because that will happen. I mean, they're going to, you know, maybe get better and then no longer bed baths. Now we're going to do a, a chair bath or something. Um, you know, so you guys will need to um, update those care plans as things change. They don't see goals in their se in their service notes because um, it's going to be for, you know, that's for the nurse to decide if they've met the goals. Um, so it will not be in here, only the intervention. Uh, then they have the patient identifier section. Um, they'll just have to, uh, I think the PIC2 is marked as a required section. Um, yeah, see, so it, it gives you that error. It says the PIC2 is required. Um, so they do have to answer this before they can complete their note. Um, and again, those task actions. And then here's the last section. It's just the vital sign section. Now, if you do enter, and I think I set some up on this one. If you do enter, or if they enter a vital sign that's outside of the range that's ordered, um, it will give them a little, that same icon the other disciplines get, that it's out of range. And if they hover over it, it'll tell them what the um, range should be. Um, so that gives them a heads up. They need to um, contact the, the nurse as well. And then that's all the sections in their note. Um, they do have the option, of course, to change um, what section they are from here instead of hitting previous and next multiple times. They can skip over and just um, go back to that header and supplies, which they'll do at the end of the notes. Um, they can view other service notes um, that are in a completed status. If they needed to look at one, they just they could they could do that. Um, I don't know that they would need to. They could look at their last notes if they wanted to do that kind of thing, but it'll open up that PDF form of that of the service note they choose and they could view that from here. And they also they, they can preview their service note if needed. Um that's it's a very short note, but they can hit on uh, click on that preview service note and then can see what their service note looks like um, in a continuous format. And you just kind of scroll through that if they ever needed to. Um, it's very rare that they probably would ever have to save and close um, and then come back into their note to edit it because they are so short they usually can get their documentation done while they're in the home. But if for some reason they needed to, um, they would, before they left the house, go back to the header and supply section, go ahead and enter the time they left the, the home, and then if and when you guys choose to do electronic signatures, of course, they'll choose under patient signature uh, the electronic. Um, they can click on enter signature, and it'll bring up that pop-up window for the um, patient to sign, and then they just choose accept. And then that does gray out the time because the patient did attest to that time, but if for some reason the home health aide had to stay late and they want to correct that time right here, they can remove the signature, adjust that time, and then have the patient sign it again. So um, uh, they at least need to do that before they um, leave the home, if, once you guys do electronic signatures. And then if they did need to save and close, they just hit save and close. Um, and to be able to get back into it, and now you can see there's, there's the icon on the left of the patient's name, which is the it shows that a service note exists. If you hover over it, it'll show if it's open or complete. If it's open, obviously, they need to go back into it. So they'll just click on this visit again. And now instead of having the option to add the note, they have the option to view it and edit it, and they, they will not see the remove. So they'll choose to edit it to get back into it. 
they can finish their documentation. Um, and then when they're done, they'll hit complete. First time they sign uh, any uh, notes or, or any, well, that's all they'll sign. But anytime they sign a note, the first time they sign a note, excuse me, it'll uh, pull their full name and credentials from their associate tab. This box down here will default to save my signature for future use. Um, and they could hit accept, and then this signature will pop up every single time. And all they have to do is hit accept anytime they um, sign an, a service note. If they wanted to, to draw their own signature, they can click on the draw, draw within their box legibly and with their credentials. And then again, if they leave this save my signature for future use and choose accept, then that signature will pull up every single time. When they're done with, and, and then then they're done with the note, unless uh, I should have. Uh, let me show you them one other thing. So if they are in the note. And they don't answer something that's required. Let me go to the, this next section as well. They don't answer something that is required when they mark it as complete. They will get a uh, error here saying that it is required and they need to answer it before they complete their note. Um, if they were on a different section and they clicked on that error, it will bring them right back to the section to enter that information, and then they just address it, and then they can hit complete again. Um, so that's pretty much all they need to, to really know. I mean, everything else is, um, you know, they don't do much. They just, they may need to know where to find information in the encounter and know how to enter the service note and edit a service note market is complete. Um, now, as far as the, um, the app goes, me. Um, you know, of course, they do need to have an Android or iOS device to be able to download our app. Um, their Android does need to be version 7.1, Nougat, or higher. Um, the iOS for Apple needs to be 11, I think, think it was 11 or higher. So they just need to have the new, a newer operating system on there. One, you know, and those are pretty old, you know. Those, they should have newer operating systems, but some, some people have some super old phones. Um, it will not work if it's a, a version prior to those two. The other thing they need to know is that the device, if you guys uh, do use this, does have to have the GPS on it. Um, and then they do when they, uh, they'll search the store, whether it's Apple or the Google Play Store, they'll search for either Care Fishing or Care Visit Notes. Um, they'll find our, our our app that has this icon, our logo on it, and it'll say Care Visit Notes by Bill Creech. Um, they'll download it, install it. When they go to install it, it'll end up asking them permissions um, for access for their location services and uh, their storage. That's so we can download the service notes to their um, uh, to the app to their device. And so they'll have those to document, plus we need to download the schedule and everything else. We need access to the storage for that. And the location services are for the EVV portion of the app, but um, that they do, you still need to give it permissions or the app won't work at all. So give it all the permissions it asks for. Um, we do not track their GPS all over town or anything. If they do use the EVV, it's only when they click um, you know, start mileage, end mileage, or start care, stop care. Um, it just captures their GPS at the moment they click those buttons with a timestamp. Um, we don't follow them around or anything like that. Uh, I know some uh, um, staff are concerned about that, so we want to ease their fears. So when they install it, give it permissions. They do need to be on Wi-Fi the first time they log in. They also need to have set up their their uh, password online before they try to log in on the app. The temporary passwords don't let you log in on it. You have to create the 
your own password first. Um, so when they're on Wi-Fi, when they first, let me uh, see if I can show them from the beginning here. Here, I'm going to do something. I'm going to show you what it will look like um, truly from the beginning. Okay, so this is the login screen. After they set up their password online, they'll come in here and enter that um, login information. It's, you know, of course, your, your org code, LMVH3106, their username that's, that you guys set them up with. And then, of course, their password that they've set up. Um, then they'll choose sign in. Um, it's going to ask, uh, you should, again, they do need to be on Wi-Fi that very first time so that they uh, we can download those service notes, and they are quite lengthy. After that, um, every and once they download those service notes that first time, they don't have to uh, download them again unless we made changes to their service notes or, doc, you know, in, inside uh, the online, um, they are going to have to come in here and download the new versions, um, but that will be the only other time, and I'll show you guys how they'll do that. So you're going to say yes um, or give her permission to download those notes. That first time it, it does a full download. This does take a second. This is why they need to be on Wi-Fi because those it's going to download all the service notes, not just the home health aids. It downloads all the note forms for your whole agency, all the patient forms and all the service notes. Also, um, after the first time they log in, um, and we'll go through those steps here in a minute, but since they're not downloading the, the whole service note, Stuff. Um, when they log in, it will download their their schedule into the into the app. So that's all it's going to download every time um, they log in after that first time. They can do that on cellular data. They can be on Wi-Fi. Um, it doesn't take much information. It doesn't use much data. Um, so we got our stuff done. Over here on the left side is the EVV function. Um, I'm not sure if you're um, Home health aides are going to be needing to do this or not, but I'll go over it in case you guys do. Um, this is the EVV portion, electronic visit verification. Um, so what they typically do when they're going to start their mileage, or when they, before, right, you know, when they're going to head to that first uh, patient's house, they're going to click on the start mileage. They're going to find their visit for that day, and I'm, I hope I have one for today. Today's the uh, four nine. I know I have one on 4-6. Um, we'll do the 4-6. Well, I'll show you with this one. It really needs to be the same day because the EVV transactions need a match. Um, so we may get an error when we go to upload. But this is how they'll do it. They'll hit um, choose the correct data service and the correct patient uh, name. And then they're gonna, you're gonna have to confirm everything in this app. So it's when you click on it, it's gonna, gonna ask you to confirm the start driving time, and they'll click start driving. That will track that their GPS coordinate, as well as the timestamp of when they click that. Um, when they get to the patient's home, um, they would choose to hit stop mileage, and then it again captures their GPS and the timestamp, so it'll figure out the travel. Um, time, the mileage, um, and for the EVV. I mean, and that that's not put in on the service note automatically or anything like that, um, but that's a separate function. Um, if you guys ever had to truly use EVV, then those files, uh, that information will get transmitted in a, you know, from CareFish in a different way. 
Um, so then they would, you know, go to go in the patient's house, see that the patient's home. They can start care. At that point, they'd choose start care. Um, again, they'd scroll to their data service, and they wouldn't have this many services in here. As you're verifying them and service notes are getting uploaded, these do start dropping off. Um, so as they wouldn't have to scroll down. So just be aware of that. Um, then they would click on the again the correct data service, correct patient name. And again, they're going to have to confirm. They're going to choose Start Care. And again, that tracks that their GPS and shows that they're um, in that patient's home at that address and what time they started that. So then after that, they'd come over here to the Service Notes tab or icon. Um, they'd click on that. Again, they'd go to the uh, correct data service and patient. And I'm not sure if, sure if this test patient had a home health care plan set up, but we're going to find out. And then again, they're going to select service for service note. And then they're going to choose, uh, this is a hospice patient, so um, they're going to choose the home health aid visit, but um, they're going to choose that correct note type and hit select service note type. And it's going to bring them into the service note, the edit mode of it. It's, it's going to be exactly how it is online, other than it looks different. Um, but it has uh, the same functions. So give it a minute to load. Usually doesn't take very long. It takes longer when I'm demonstrating it than it ever does in real life, I believe. These, the notes are going to be in the same order as the ones online. Everything's going to be the same verbiage, everything. Um, the only thing that's a little different is to enter their time in. They click on the blue time in, and then they'll uh, correct their time. They'll adjust it however they need to, and then they'll hit OK. And then for their, you know, and again, we'll come back to this, but they'll, they'll hit next. That's over here in the top right to go to the next section, and then we do have a, a, an aid care plan. So um, they're going to click on the drop-down next to each task, and then they're going to choose. It's got the same options, whether they completed it, wasn't applicable, or the patient caregiver refused, and then they're going to hit update. Um, once it does that, or once you do that, it just automatically moves you to the next section, which is the comment section for that task, so they can enter those comments. Um, and as many comments as they need to, and then they're going to hit update. And it's going to move them again to the next task. And it tells you the name of the task up here at the top of each of these pop-ups as well. And then they're going to hit update again. Again, you're going to get the comments. And then they'll just keep going through every task and commenting on them. And I'm just going to kind of fly through these real quick. He added a lot of tasks. There's quite a few, so I'm not going to go through all of these. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and hit next. Um, and then you, there is a narrative in these notes um, so that they can document any additional information. The only other thing, uh, op uh, functions in uh, here is they can, to change the section, they would go, um, they can click on the section name up here and then they can filter to any other section they have. And I think I am going to have to complete these because. They are required. Correct. 
And then uh, will the phone app allow you to like uh, track your miles and for the mileage? Well, for the EVV side, it'll do it, but it doesn't tie it into the actual service. No, it's kind of a separate thing, and it, you'll be able to see the information online on the EVV tab for the um, for that patient. And then you can see the information on the EVV tab for the associates um, as well, and that has a little bit more information on it. Okay, finally got through all of these. Um, so. It doesn't automatically fill in any of that information for them. They would still have to enter that information on the um, patient header and supplies section. Um, so the way that they would do that, um, and, I, and I thought Molly said that we're, they all weren't going to put duration and mileage on here, but um, to do it, you know, uh, at the end of the visit or even before, you know, when you first get to the header and you put your time in, um, you could put your travel duration right here. If it was eight minutes or whatever, if it does that, they do need a, and you guys are paying that, you do need to uh, put which, if it's a flat rate or per mile. Um, oh, that was the duration, but the mileage, uh, we can just put that mileage right here under that. Um, but if you do have a mileage in there, you do have to hit a, uh, one of these two, flat or mileage. And then they can enter any additional comments about this time in, time out, mileage, or anything in this comment section here if they ever needed to. To do their time out, they just click on time out, enter their time out. Um, and then for the associate signature, um, they'll come down here where it says not required, and they'll choose electronic. The first time they choose electronic, they're going to have to come up here and hit associate signature where it turns blue, and they'll actually have to uh, sign their name here. It doesn't do the uh, the automatic uh, cursive signature that that the, that it does online. Um, so they would have to do that. Um, it would apply now. Every uh, every other note they do from now on, once they choose electronic, their name will just show up. It'll just have their signature already. For the patient, they have to come over here and choose manage patient signature, and then they'll have to choose select under the inner signature. And uh, for the electronic, they'll choose electronic. Otherwise, they can do not required signature on paper or file or paper. Um, but for the electronic, if they choose that, they'll have to then click on the blue electro enter signature, and it brings up that same box for the patient to sign. And then they just choose add signature. Um, these are time stamped. It doesn't show that right here in the note, but it is time stamped. So once they're complete, done with their note, uh, they do have the option to just save their note and come back to it. Again, they typically don't need to do that. Um, they can just finish that note here and then hit uh, complete when it's done. And then it's going to give you a little warning. Are you sure you want to do this? You won't be able to edit, edit the document, and you'll say yes. Once the assessment's complete, if they do have Wi-Fi or cellular data signal um, at the time, they could go ahead and just upload the note right then and there. Um, but if they want to wait till the end of the day or something, uh, they have that option too. So they just hit back up here at the top, and it takes them back to that um, home screen. Now then they would come over here and hit end care as soon as they're done with that. And then that, again, tracks their GPS and timestamps it. Um, just for that, the second they hit it, we'll just get their coordinates for where they are the, the second they hit that button. Uh, now, for the EVV, um, you can hit end, date, end day when you're done with your day, and it'll upload all that data. Also, when they hit log out, it'll upload all that data. So they do need to have cellular data or Wi-Fi when they hit those two functions. The other forms, they won't use those. Those are for patient forms like the ABNs, NOMNOX, consents and agreements kind of thing. So they won't use this. This app is very, very limited on what you can see. I mean, you can obviously see there's no patient encounter, so you can't, you know, you can't adjust meds, you can't write orders. Of course, home health days won't be doing that, but you can't really see any of that information either. So we do have a patient fact report they can view. So if they come over here and click on that, they can find their patient's name, um, and then hit. They'll have. To, it says select care, but that's. It's just going to give us a patient fact report for that patient. So they'll click click on that select care. 
This will give them the information off the profile tab, their basic demographics. Um, if there's a directions note in there, they'll get that. It'll, they'll see the physician's name, any of the contacts, notes from the notes tab. If they have security permissions to even view those, then those will be displayed here. They'll be able to see the payer, um, the clinical team, the clinical manager, and uh, case manager. Um, they'll, they'll see what other disciplines are involved, the disaster plan, advanced direct, does, you know, diagnoses, safety measures, allergies, nutritional requirements. Then on the next page, they have information from the uh, clinical tab as well, DMEs, um, some functional limitations, et cetera. And then they'll see the meds there, and if there was orders, they'd see the orders uh, with, with the verbiage in it. Um, so this is the only information they'd be able to get about the patient um, just using the app. Otherwise, they would need to log in, and then they can hit back up at the top to get back to that home screen. The other things that you guys need to know about is up here at the top, there is that menu icon, um, the three dots. If you click on that, there is a link that goes that it's goes straight to our website. It goes to the login screen on our website so that they needed to access online, they could. Um, being that this, this is really an offline app, it only needs, you know, online um, access when you log in, log off, or choose to manually upload or download anything. When you log in and it downloads your schedule, it's going to only download your schedule as what it is at that moment in time. So if you guys made changes to their schedule in the office, they won't see that schedule until they log in the next time, or you guys would have to notify the um, notify the clinic, the home health aide that, hey, we changed your schedule, um, so go, go to the menu and download your schedule. And then they'll choose this option, and it'll download the schedule as it is at that time, so it'll reflect all those changes. Um, if the change is for like the next day or something, it, you don't necessarily have to go through that step because they should log off at the end of every day. And then when they log in in the next morning, it will reflect the changes that you guys have made. I told you that very first time they log in, it's going gonna, it's gonna to ask them to download the um, service notes, and they do need to be on Wi-Fi. If we made changes to those service notes online and they need to um, download them again, you guys would have to let them know and um, tell everybody to come to the menu and download um, updated service note forms. That goes for any uh, uh, of the patient forms as well for the, uh, um, anybody else. They have the option to upload data right here. This will go ahead and upload everything if they needed to do that. But they don't have to use that. They really don't need it. It's just kind of redundant. Um, list activity, if they chose that, it will show the GPS um, information, the EVV information that we uh, just, you know, that we created. So they'll see all of that right here. And then They won't uh, need to schedule a new service, and that's very that's kind of complicated because then you have to make that service match online before you can even upload the note. Um, but they won't be doing that. Uh, they can upload the completed forms from here, which again they don't need to do that from here. They can log off from here, which again they don't need to. The remove data is a last ditch effort, really. If there's any kind of troubleshooting that we need to do with the app. Um, this will remove all of the information. It will remove your service notes, your schedule, your EVV uh, um, information that's in there. It wipes everything out, um, which, so if possible, try to get everything uploaded before this ever even happens, if it's ever needed. Um, but that's just a last-ditch effort if that app can't work. Um, that being said, sometimes we'll ask what if you guys do call us saying there's an issue, you guys just can't get it to work. Um, we may ask the device info. If you click on that, it will tell us what the device you're using, what version operating system um, you're on. And we may need this information. Again, that version is important. Make sure it's, you know, they're up-to-date phones if possible. And then the last thing is always make sure that you are updating your apps, especially the Care Efficient app. Typically, we're going to put out a notice if we do put an update out. But if you guys... Really, uh, you know, just to go in there and make sure you're on the right version every now and then. And that, that's something you have to do on your de device, you know, to update the app. And it's going to vary from device to device. But uh, yeah, we may ask you to say, you know, what the care efficient version is or what the app version is. 
and this is where you're going to identify that. Um, so they can, again, at the end of the day, hit end day. You will upload this information. Um, if there's any uh, upload notes that need to be uploaded, you can just uh, say yes or no here. Uh, if you say yes, it'll it'll ask or show the note and then put a checkbox next to them or multiple notes. And then they'll go ahead and hit upload, and then they'll confirm that by hitting OK. Then it uploads those notes to Careficient. Um, and, and again, at the end of the day, they really need to be logging off, you know, in case their phone gets lost or stolen or device. Um, plus, this will also upload all that information. So if they click log off, it'll upload in progress and knocks them out of the, of the brings them back to the login screen. And that's pretty much it. The only thing, other thing I need to tell you about that is um, the service notes, if the app doesn't check that it is a required field, at least not at this point in time. I think they're they're going to work on that. But um, so if it is a required field and then they didn't answer it and they uploaded the note, Carefishing is going to check the note to make sure those fields are that were required um, were completed. And if they were not, normally the note once it's uploaded, if it's completed offline, when we upload it, we have a rule turned on to keep it in a complete status. If a mandatory field was not answered, um, then we'll move it into an incomplete status. So they will have to log in online um, and, and go in there and correct that note and mark it as complete. Um, the EVV information that we did shows up under this EVV tab. Um, so you'll see that information here. Uh, the service note will, you know, of course be, um, it'll be uploaded to here's the one we just did. And uh, again, as long as it was everything was good, it'll show that it's in an approved status. Otherwise, otherwise, if they need a required field, it'll be incomplete. And that may change in the future, but right now that's how it works. So they, they, they'll need to know how to come, go in online and click on those notes to edit those as well, which we already went over. So just choose edit whenever it's in an incomplete status. And then online, of course, if they try to complete it without correcting that information, it's going to just give them those errors that you have to f fill this out, and then they'll they'll do that. And then mark it as complete. And that that's it. Do you guys have any questions about that? Any of that? I don't. Do you guys have any questions? Yeah. Will this be uploaded on in Brenner? Is it on the website? Will it be uploaded? Uh, um, the, yeah, he said, he said, oh, the app or the training? The, the training. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Brandon, because it's the same as the hospice, so it'll be, yeah, so it'll, you, you've sent over the videos for it. Yeah, it's identical. It's the, and even, yeah, it's, it's the exact same. I did want to show you guys the, that when you go to the associate and their EVV tab, you'll see a little bit more information. You'll see that, um. The driving information and then the start care stop care information here. And then there is an EVV report. Um, but this is a little bit, this stuff here is a little bit uh, more for when you guys truly need to use EVV and transmit that information to an aggregator uh, for your state. That's what most of this is truly for, but you do see, you know, the address information. You can verify that they were in the correct um, home, um, things like that. Um, another thing to be aware of is this one right here is a good example. Um, this one I use my phone, which has true uh, GPS. This one I use my computer, which is Wi-Fi. Um, if they're using Wi-Fi assisted GPS, then it might throw that address off, like way off. Like this, this is in the same town as me, but it's miles away. Um, so if you guys are truly trying to track that they're in a house, um, a specific address, or something like that, then um, you, you, they need to be aware of that. That they have to have true GPS on their on their device, or it won't work. And the only other time, the only time I really see that as an issue is the laptops and tablets. Sometimes they only have Wi-Fi assisted GPS. They don't have the true native GPS. But most smartphones have um, native GPS, so 
just be aware of that. Okay. But yeah, pretty straightforward for the home health aides. They just mainly just document a visit. Everything's going to be set up for them by the, you know, whoever develops the plan of care. Um, so all they really need to do is, you know, see, see where to view that information that they may need and then um, how to do that, the app if needed, and how to add a service note. So um, the other bad thing about these scheduling notes, they, these don't flow to the app either. Um, unfortunately, that's just something that hasn't happened. Uh, but if you, you know, for them to be able to view any of these scheduling notes, they would have to log in online to, to click on their, their visit there. Okay. Thank you. But, Thanks, oh, you're Brian. welcome. Oh, you're very welcome. All right, you guys have a great day. If you need anything, just let me know, okay? Okay. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Uh, you're welcome. Bye.